On today's Two on Your Side Town Hall, primary night did not turn out the way a lot of people thought it would. We are talking with India Walton, who is in the driver's seat now to be Buffalo's first new mayor in 16 years. Plus, free speech in schools. We're going to be talking with an attorney about the implications of a decision today that started with a high schooler getting punished for a social media post. And international eats. We might be able to help you make some dinner plans with an event highlighting the diversity of Buffalo's restaurants. First up for us today, the vast majority of you watching did not vote in yesterday's Democratic primary for mayor of Buffalo, but the surprising result will have a lasting impact on the city and really all of Western New York. Community activist India Walton won the race against a four term incumbent in a victory few saw coming, except maybe Walton herself. I hate to say I told you so. <laughs> Did y'all know that I'm, I'm the first woman ever to be mayor? No doubt a historic victory. One lingering question, is the race completely over or will it have to be decided for sure come November in the general election? Joining us live right now is India Walton, who upset Byron Brown last night in the Democratic primary for Buffalo mayor. We certainly appreciate you coming on. We know it's been a busy uh, less than 24 hours. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so let me start with that question about November. I'm sure you've heard the Brown campaign at least suggesting today that he might be considering a write-in campaign for November. You know the numbers, but we're going to show them to our viewers. Between the early vote and the day of ballots yesterday, just a little more than 21,000 people voted in your race. You won 52% of the vote, but there were more than 100,000 eligible voters. So if you exclude the absentees, you only had about 20% turnout. So I wonder your reaction to the mayor's people kind of looking at those numbers and suggesting that he may mount this write-in campaign come November and, and try to win after all. Um, I can't recall a time that a write-in campaign has been successful. Um, it is my hope that the leadership of Buffalo will step up um, and know that this has been a fair and transparent process. 20% um, is pretty much in line with voter turnout in any other election. Um, and I think it just speaks to the disengagement that we've had. Um, I'm looking forward to getting people more civically engaged, but for now, I would love a smooth transition. And many people are now playing catch up. They're still learning about you and your priorities. We've been hearing from you throughout the afternoon and evening here on Channel 2. And you told our Claudine Ewing that when you take office, you want to talk to people. And I imagine that's something you've probably been doing all along here throughout your run. So I'm wondering that what have you already learned that you know this is an action I have to take on day one? What's something that changes right away, a specific thing that you would immediately do different from Mayor Brown? Um, just the, access the accessibility um, of our city government, being transparent and responding um, when people are looking to hear from me is the really the first thing that is a priority. And also just being more hands on, more boots on the ground, being more visible in the community and having those honest conversations and really tackling challenges head on. Um, one of the first things that I wanna do is um, have people apply for their positions. Um, a lot of our uh, appointments, we know there's lots of patronage positions in City Hall and I want to pull job descriptions, um, compare results, evaluate our current administration, those who um, aim to, to remain and um, begin to bring in the talent that is going to help us um, usher in a new era uh, and create the best Buffalo we possibly can. I want to ask you a big picture question. Much has been made over the past decade or so about Buffalo's resurgence. Um, you've correctly pointed out, and we've covered this a lot, that many communities have been left out, and that's been a big focus of your campaign. But how do you respond to people who worry that maybe your brand of progressive politics would be too extreme and could undo some of the gains that have been made in terms of development and new industries coming here and maybe slowing down the population losses that we used to see? Um, I often refer to a principle um, that I actually learned from a good friend of mine named Seamus Gallivan about curb cuts, right? About how when you make investments in infrastructure and at the ground level, 
everyone benefits. So I don't want people to be afraid. I think that, um, you know, certain people with particular political views um, like to demonize the word socialism. But what we've experienced during the pandemic um, with federal stimulus money, um, with free health care and immunizations proves that people do like socialist policies that prioritize working class people. Um, and we just need to a little bit of a culture shift in Buffalo. Yeah, in India, earlier on Most Buffalo, we heard from Buffalo Common Council President Darius Pridgen, who said that he has a good relationship with you personally. But again, some believe that your politics are to the left of most city lawmakers. So what's your approach going to be to the working relationship with that other branch of government? And do you think you can get the support and the votes for some of your more progressive ideas to really make them put them into action in Buffalo? I do believe that I will have enough support to move um, meaningful policies forward. Um, I shoot for the moon, and uh, if I miss, we'll still land am among the stars. Um, I am a person that believes in working with the willing, and we don't have to agree on everything, but I think that what we can all agree on is that we want Buffalo residents to live high-quality lives. Um, we have been thinking more about health disparities and social determinants of health. And we want a healthy, thriving community that serves all of us. And we're going to work together and accomplish that. I'm, I have full confidence. Much has been made about the word socialist. You just mentioned socialism. A lot of the national press over the past day or so has pointed out that you will be the first socialist mayor of a big city in this country in 60 years. Many people watching think socialism will be bad for Buffalo. What do you say to those people and how do you actually define it? Buffalo is the third poorest city of its size in the nation. We are a working class blue collar town and we have to put more investments into um, reducing concentrated poverty and disadvantage, um, closing the home ownership and wealth gap. Um, I just, I don't want people to be afraid. <laughs> I lead with a spirit of care, compassion, empathy, and understanding. And I would prefer us to just have honest conversations about um, what people's apprehensions um, are um, and really work together to, to make uh, Buffalo better. We also asked some viewers for their questions for you. And one wanted to know if you plan to start setting up transition teams soon so that you can really hit the ground running. And if so, we wonder what that's gonna look like. What's your main focus there? Yes, um, <laughs> it has been quite the, the whirlwind of 24 hours, but a lot of conversations today about what's next is um, a transition team. Um, just bringing in experts who are knowledgeable. Um, and like I said, pulling those job descriptions and um, attack, attracting talent um, to, to be able to help us lead um, and be able to hit the ground running on, on day one. Um, it's not lost on me that uh, this is my first time holding political office and um, I am really leaning on the expertise of some of my colleagues in government. Um, I got a, a phone call from the mayor of Albany today, so I'll be uh, relying um, heavily on other upstate mayors, um, other new mayors um, to, to help guide me through the process of putting together a really strong transition team. We love to ask those questions when you haven't even really had time to think about it yet. <laughs> um, one of the biggest debates in city politics over the past year or so has really centered on the school zone camera program. Um, the mayor was for it. The council ended up scrapping it with many arguing that it targeted minority communities, that it was too punitive. Um, mayor Brown has actually told us that he is going to try to work with the council to keep the cameras, even though they said that they need to go. Um, is that a dialogue that you would plan to continue with the council or other ideas as far as how to make school zones safer without the cameras? We, I feel like we skipped a couple of steps. <laughs> um, striping streets, painting crosswalks, putting out crossing guards are things that will make um, our streets safer and naturally slow uh, traffic. We went straight to ticketing um, in communities that we know are disproportionately impacted by um, over policing and excessive fines and fees. I was a, a, a member of the Fair Fines and Fees Coalition when I was an organizer, and we know that the data suggests <laughs> um, that poor people and people of color are disproportionately harmed by excessive fines and fees. So, you know, the speed zone camera uh, program has been proven 
to be um, just that. And um, I, I think it should be done away with. So I, if the Common Council is not successful in ending that program before I take office, it will be uh, definitely a list of priorities. India Walton has been our guest. She is likely to be the next mayor of Buffalo after winning the Democratic primary. Again, we know you've been incredibly busy, so we appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you so much. All right, best of luck to you. Um, I, I think so many people still just kind of uh, figuring out how this happened, um, what happened and digesting it and learning a lot about India Walton. That's why I think it was great that we got to ask her a lot of, you know, specific policy questions there because people are, are still kind of figuring it out. Well, and learning that the people and their vote is far louder than any analyst um, who will say that something's going to go one way or the other. Few of the experts, right, saw this one coming. Correct.